All right, so at this point, uh, I've, I'm done with my pre-flight for my project, and I've compiled it. I've done taco build one more time, so it's all, it's all ready. I'm going to look at the handout now. You should have gotten the new handout from the network folder. If you go to the network folder, there's a brand new one, number 8. If you didn't get a chance to print it, you can still look at it. But let me open up number 8. Which, oops, I forgot to change that to number 8 right there. Don't worry about that. Uh, and so we've got signing your final APK. When your app is complete, you must sign it with your developer certificate before publishing. The cool thing is that for Android developers, we can create a self-signing certificate. We can create a certificate that says we're a developer and we're going to vouch for ourselves. It'll let us do that. Now, when we're doing this for an iPhone, the one that's going to vouch for us is Apple. And they will gladly vouch for us for $99 a year. We, as Android developers, we're very trustworthy. And we're going to make our own developer certificate, and we're going to say we're legitimate. And we are, and we don't have to pay anyone. So we're going to need to create this developer certificate, this key store. It's got different names. But basically, this file that that is your your key, like the key to your house. That key gets you into the house. That key, you know, is your approval that you can walk into that house. We need something like that for our apps, because all of these apps that we get from the official channels, such as Amazon App Store, Google Play App Store, iTunes App Store, they've all been vouched for by a developer, and oftentimes a third party that says this app that you downloaded is the official Facebook. It's not some fake, you know, fly-by-night organization, Russian copy of Facebook. It's Facebook. So we are going to do something similar for our own apps here. You will create a self-signed certificate which contains your credentials as an Android developer. So what I'm saying is we're going to do this via the command prompt. And that's, that's the command there. What I'm going to do is... Uh, I have my command prompt open, but it's set to my project folder. I'm going to open another command prompt. Um, I'm just doing this because I don't want to lose my this file that I'm going to create. This file, it's going to be .jks, JavaScript key, or Java key store. This file that we're going to create is going to be one of the most important files ever that you have. If you're doing this like for real, you know, we're going to create this file and this is us. This is our official key store that we're going to submit to Google. You need to make a copy of that file and back it up and make backups of the backup. We'll get to that in a moment, but I'm telling you, this is your credential that you are the developer. You're going to use this key to sign your app and any subsequent apps that you submit to the App Store and any subsequent versions of the app. Because if you sign this app with this credential today and then in two weeks or whatever when we do version two, next week, whatever, and you create a brand new key store, that key store is not going to match up with the one you, make the, you made this week. And, the, and they're going to say, we cannot update your app. You're not the right developer. Even if you go through the same process, this is all random number generators and such. So you have to create this file and keep it with you. You know, store it, save it on Dropbox, save it on Google Drive, whatever. Save it somewhere that you'll always be able to access it. And this password that we're going to create, save it somewhere. Or at least memorize it or something. Because if you can't get back into your own key store, you can't vouch for yourself for your own apps, you're stuck. Worst case scenario, you're going to have to start over. Make another key store and, and submit a new version of your app. You already took your, your ID name previously. So that's what I'm telling you. You need to keep track of all of this. Be careful with it. I'm opening a new command prompt so that I can go to the desktop um, because I want to put this on the desktop so that I don't lose it. So we don't want to put ours on our desktop. Yes, if you're doing all of this, again, for real, that when we get to the App Store and you're submitting it for real, then yes, you definitely want to save this somewhere. For me, that I'm kind of teaching this, it doesn't quite matter. I can be a little 
loosey-goosey with it. But for you guys that if this is going to be like a real developer's account and such, you definitely want to save this somewhere, legitimately. Yes. Should we save it uh, at the root of our uh, memory drive, or yeah. put it in the subdirectory? I would put it in the root because that'd be the fastest way to find it, just in case. Later on, you can move it. We're just going to create the file. We're going to create this file somewhere, and you need to be able to find it again when we create it. So I'm going to try to write this without copying and pasting first. And if I make a mistake, it'll tell me. Basically, key tool, space, dash, gen, key. We're going to generate a key, space, dash, v, <coughs> verbose. You know, tell me every step that you're doing. Space, dot, key store, space. What's the name of the file you're creating? What's the key store? I'm saying in my instructions, last name JKS. Don't literally put last name JKS. Put your last name, Smith JKS. Now, this probably you're going to use the name here that you have in your config XML file. Again, if you're talking about it, if you're doing everything that I'm doing literally, you have to think of one step ahead out of the box when you need to do it yourself. So, if you've got this config XML file that I called com dot campos dot mysdce it might be a good idea to call this campos dot jks although this can be called anything you want it can be called kitty cat dot jks it can be called campos dot key it can be called anything you want but the example in my handout has your last name dot jks java key store space dash alias Technically, you can have diff you can sort of have different developers in this one key store. It's like this. This is what we're creating right here. We're creating a ring, a set of keys. You know, a key ring. We're creating a key ring. That's the key store. And then we're creating an actual key for this one person to use with this one app, or this one <coughs> developer to use with multiple apps. That's the alias. So the key store is the whole key ring, and the alias is the one key. We can be, we can keep this pretty straightforward by saying we're going to create a key ring with one key. We don't have to get very fancy and create a different key for each app. We could do that if we really, really are paranoid about security. But one key, one alias in one key store will work just fine. Yes. So you're saying that I can use, for instance, that Smith JKS for all my apps and then make the and a, a different alias for each one? Yes. You can make a different alias for different apps, all saved in the one key store. Sorry. I'm going to recommend we're going to make one alias in one key store, and that's all that we need. We don't have to get very fancy with different aliases for different apps. We could if we wanted to, but then it's more to remember and more to make a mistake. So this alias, I'm just going to say the same, I'm just going to say the same last name without the JKS. The whole file is campos.jks, but the key in the file is just campos, or in my case, smith, space, dash key, alg, key algorithm. What algorithm are we using to encode this? Space RSA. I forget what that one stands for, but it's some sort of encryption algorithm. Space dash key size. Oops, this is lowercase, key size. <coughs> What's the size of the encryption uh, seed, I believe? What, you know, how are we creating this random number? Uh, we're saying key size of 2 kilobytes, so 2048. Space dash validity, and then this is 10,000 days. I believe, this, I believe this is in days. 10,000 days is about 30 years. So this key store, this developer certificate that you're creating is going to be valid, you know, 30 years from now, after the zombie apocalypse. It'll still be, it'll still be active. Um, the point of this is that the documentation, somewhere in the Google documentation, it says they recommend that you make a key store 
value validity of at least 25 years. So Google thinks it'll be around for at least 25 more years. So it wants you to create a key store of at least 25 years expiry. 10,000 is much more easier to type, which is about 30 years, so that's fine. Hopefully I typed all of this right. If I didn't, I should have copied and pasted, but I'm going to press enter. And if I typed it wrong, it'll tell me. What's, what it's going to ask me for here is uh, you will ask to fill in various keys, and, or various fields. Enter a password for the JKS file. So to be able to use this file, it needs two levels of in, two levels of passwords. So I'm going to write I don't know Kitty Cat. I better write this down. Kitty Cat. You're not going to be able to see what you typed. Make sure if you need to look at what you type, because you're going to type in the key store and you're going to need to confirm it. Kitty cat. Okay. So one level of security is to, to use the keychain, the key store. There's my password. It's going to then say, okay, great. You're a developer. What are all of these credentials? And on my handout here, it's going to ask for his first and last name. This can be anything actually. You know, it can just be V Campos. Fine. It can be you know, Victor M. Campos. Sure, it can be uppercase, lowercase, whatever. I'm going to put in... I'm going to put in a first name, last name. Oftentimes when there's something that it asks us to fill in, there's a default value in brackets. It's saying if you don't put anything in, you will be the unknown developer. It will say unknown. So put something in, put something in, or it'll say unknown. Press enter on that. What is the name of your organizational unit? It's a fancy name of, of saying, like, what's your job title? In my description, in my handout, I've got their job title, like, developer. You can leave that unknown. You can put something in. I'm going to say just put developer, because that's what you are, probably. Developer or CEO, or chief tech officer, or whatever you want here. What's your job title? What's your organizational unit? I'm going to put developer and spell it properly. Developer. Now, if you do misspell this stuff, uh, I think you can change it. I don't have any handout that tells you how to do it, because I have to look it up too. But if, you, if you're able to change this, you have to look up how to do it. So basically, make sure you write this properly. What is the name of your organization? Okay, my, my company's name. What I put into that config file, that'll work. What did I call mine? LLC or something. That's fine. What is the name of your city or locality? San Diego. What is the name of your state or province? California. State, province, or prefecture. What is the two-letter country code of this unit? United States, so U.S. You'd have to look this up if you were doing it for other countries. It's the official two-letter one. Sometimes you cannot assume what it is. You, you would look that up if you're, if you're a developer in other countries, U.S., United States. It's going to be here right here. It's going to check here. Okay. There's your name. I seem to spell it right. Organizational unit, organization, locality, state. Everything seems to be correct. It's going to assume no unless you explicitly put yes. If you put no, it'll let you go back and fix it. It does seem to be correct in my case, so I'll type yes and press enter. Generating 2048-bit RSA key, etc. Validity 10,000 days, etc. Okay, so one level of security is, let's say I've got this, this document right here. You need the password just for me to give you the document. Okay, then you need a password to open it and actually read it. That's the second password here. 
return if same as key store password. If you want double security, you can have two different passwords. One to simply use the key and one, you know, to open the key. You can use two different ones. You might forget that. So I'm going to just press enter here to take the same password I wrote up there. Which remember to write it down or, remem or memorize it. Press enter. It'll process it pretty fast. Storing smith.jks. And on my desktop, there's my file. If you saved it to your flash drive or somewhere else, you got that file. And if you're just doing this whole sequence to learn how to do it and you don't care if it's real or not, then don't worry about it. But if this eventually, when you want to do this for real, for your real <coughs> company, your real self, your real apps, you're going to want to save that somewhere and make backups of your backups. Save it on Dropbox and save it on Google Drive. And save it on OneDrive, just to be safe. And on that one flash drive also. Because that is your identity that vouches for you as a developer. Now that you have now that you have your JKS file stored in a safe place, you will need to use this in all your future apps. It validates you as the creator of your apps. Make a backup, then make a backup of a backup. Any questions on that? Did everyone get that uh, JKS file? If you didn't get it, try to copy and paste, because it is uh, a lot to type exactly right. And some of these might seem like, you know, that's key ALG. It's not A1G, it's ALG, key algorithm, capital RSA, and so forth. Okay, that's part one, creating the developer certificate, the JKS file, the key store. We've got that set up. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Where do you store the last name that uh, JKS, the JKS file? Uh, that you just put on your desktop for convenience. Um, is the location of this thing other than in your head, is that, is that kind of required? Where, where do you have to refer back to this thing? You use it every time, as we'll see on part two here, every time you're going to do the final taco build. So every time you're going to do the final build, to, to then the next step is to put it on the App Store. So you're going to need to use that file every time you do taco build the following way to say, this is my app, this is my official finished app, so that I can give to Google or Apple. So that has to be a qualified name. Uh, it can the be... SQL XYZ, because I put my XYZ. You, you mean right over here when we get to this? Yes. Please just go ahead and publish it. Oh, yes. Yes, we do need to reference it somewhere that it exists, which we're about to do. But the point is that definitely that file, if this is for legit, if this is legitimate, we need to save it somewhere and be sure we have access to it whenever we need it. <coughs> okay, so then part two, we're going to use this file to be to build our release-ready version, our signed version. Because every time we've been doing taco build, if you haven't noticed, it's been saying over here, build successful, built the following. And if you look at that, blah, 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 blah output android debug.apk. It's been building an APK file, an Android package. It's, it's an actual, sort of like, you know, if you install an app on your Windows, computer it's a dot exe usually it's some sort of executable that you execute on the on the windows to install it or if you're on the mac you often get a dmg file you know that's the file of the app every time we've been doing build we get an apk but it's in debug mode in order for it to be in the final release mode because the app stores will not accept your debug version they want a release version we now need to do taco build with that key store so let's look here. I'm just saying we'll do one final build, which we did. You will refer to your JKS in the command prompt, so make typing it easier. Copy the file to the root of your C drive. In our case, 
you have to decide to put it in the C drive or on your F drive, because on the next line here I have, we're going to type Taco Build Android space dash dash release space space dash dash sorry, single space dash dash space dash dash key store and then a path to their JKS file space dash dash alias what's the alias what's the key in the key store that we're accessing if we type follow that properly then it'll ask us for a password twice and then it'll process process and then eventually we'll get the release version so let's let's try this. So what I'm saying is this is mine's on the desktop and the path to that is pretty convoluted. My project I put a copy of it on my F drive. I put it on my F drive. It's right there, smith.jks. And my app is on the apps folder. So I know where my JKS file is. It's on the F drive root level. If you left yours on the desktop, you're going to need to type the path to the desktop, which is a little complicated sometimes. My handout is saying if you put it in the C drive, that's another place to find it. But now I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm going to clear this first. I'm going to say uh, taco build Android. Da, space dash dash release space dash dash just one moment space dash dash key store equal uh, equals f colon backslash that is a backslash I called mine smith.jks. If you called yours something else, type that. Space dash dash alias space smith. That's what I called mine. Question, Ed. Yeah, in the uh, project file that we edited, we did the taco build on. For each of the understanding, can we put that on our, our memory stick as a subdirector? Do we need that in the root too along with the JKS file? I've got it in a subdirectory. Notice on my F drive, I've got my apps folder. And then I've got today's project, 419. So it is in a subfolder. That can be anywhere. The big important thing is where you've got key store equals. That has to be you know, the path to that JKS file, wherever it may be. Oh. Okay. If it didn't work, if it did work, it'll pop up a very basic screen that says, put your password. If that never popped up, but it did say build successful, it didn't really work. So let's see if mine worked, and then we'll see what happens. It'll process it as, as usual, but then there will be a, a little basic... The alias is the name of the key in the key ring which in our case I had said in the handout, if I called it smith.jks, the alias is just smith. So I do see here that it's, it did recognize their key store, release key store, and there's my password, enter password. The very, very basic, you might not even notice it, but a very basic enter your key store password. That's the first level of security which in my case was this password here, yes. And then it's saying enter the actual key password, the alias. Sometimes the names are not consistent, unfortunately. But now it's saying, okay, put in that password. I use the same password twice for less effort. It seemed to have taken the both. The first password is for the file. Yes. The second password is for the alias within the file. Exactly. So five different aliases in the file. Could be five different. Yes. You would still use the, the first password of the whole key store, but then one of your five aliases in the key store. So it seems that so far on mine it's working because it asks for the password. If yours doesn't ask for a password, your path, it doesn't know where your key store file is at. 
and to fully confirm that this works eventually after build successful because we always see build successful but now the big difference is that I see android-release.apk instead of android.debug so that one seemed to have worked for me. Let's take a moment to see if it works for you. Get that why, is the, why is there a blank button? Why is there a blank dash there? From the documentation that I saw, that is just to confirm that it is an Android-specific email. Okay. Can you go back and go over your command again? Yeah, let me, let me go back to the Thomas figure. It's kind of a big command. I can't quite zoom into it, but there it is there. Yeah. 
All right, so hopefully it worked. I'm going to go on now, but my instructions, now what they say is that eventually you will see Build Successful and you will get your final signed APK file in this folder, which we'll go to right now. And what I'm saying here is move it or copy it to your desktop and give it this name. Because at the moment, all of our projects, if everyone succeeded, everyone gets a result that says Android-release.apk. And technically, you can upload this to Google, and I don't think it'll really care. But I'm going to say uh, we're going to move or copy that file out of the folder and give it a more meaningful name. And that's our actual project. So what it's saying is, in, in your folder, I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer here. I'm going to open Apps, open my project, and in here we've got... Uh, platforms. We've got the Android platform installed. We have the build folder, the result of building. We've got outputs. Open that. And then APK folder. Open APK. So our debug files and such are still there. They don't go away. But what's important is Android-release. This is our final compressed version. Our whole project compresses down to, in my case, 1.1 megabytes. Very compact <coughs> project. So what I'm saying is, that's our final project. I want to put it in a more handy location. So I'm going to copy it, or you can move it. I'm going to copy it and go back to the root level of my the root level of my apps, and I just have to decide where to put this. My apps folder are all my works in progress, let's say. But I can paste this into the apps folder, I can paste it into a, you know, a brand new folder that I create called final, whatever I want, whatever structure you want, but I'm gonna put it in the apps folder just right there, paste. The works, the work in progress, folders are still all there, but there's the final version of that app, and I'm saying in my notes that if I call this something like my SDCE1 release APK, there I've named the project, I've named the file what the project is, it's the my SDCE project with Android code 1. Version code 1 is the first version that I'm going to upload to the app stores. So there's my APK file and then my handout for this is congratulations you have a release ready version of your app to distribute. We have our final part. Let's get ourselves down to the lines. We're not taking into account version 2 but okay. Yes. Something happened and it didn't. Uh, it didn't take your JKS file. Okay, if you've got the, so you say you've got unsigned also. Okay, yes, I think on mine too, and I wouldn't worry about it. It's just uh, unaligned, and there's all these different versions that 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 happen. So. The release one is the one we really care about, and if it's got anything else, I wouldn't quite worry about it. It's just sort of like temporary files, but the one that Google will accept, or, I, or Apple will accept, is the release version. So technically, after all of this time, then, we've got a real app project. Uh, let's take a look at something here. If we want to load this into simulators, we have to look up how to use... Um, actually, I have it in a previous handout. I guess I did write it down. 
over and Campos Android 2. Okay. Um, just to guide you to it, it's going to be under Setup Older Device. There's a little instructions there using ADB to manually add an app right there. Question? So if I wanted to do this for iOS, I need to be using Node on Mac? Mm -hmm. And it's the same process. Yeah. But it will just allow me to do it iOS version. Exactly. Um, that's the big limitation of this, unfortunately, that the developer tools are only Mac compatible. So you would have to use Node and Taco and all of that on a Mac. There is a way for you to tether. I've got a Windows computer and setting up a remote server. I can connect my Windows computer to a Mac computer so I don't have to be sitting in front of it. I can just use the Mac as a server to run on my Windows. So yes, it's all doable with all of these commands. I believe, Jocelyn, you've actually done that, right? Yeah. So we have one person at least here. So it is all doable. It's just, you know, taco build dash release iOS. Same sort of process, but another hitch there is that we need to go through the process of creating a developer certificate at developer.apple.com, and that's $99. You have to wait to approve yeah. or tell you what changes to make to you. On the on the part where you where you release it to them, yes, but you can get the certificate pretty quickly. Um, but to actually release it on their app stores, then you do have to get it approved. Question? Another question there? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, key tool uh -huh. we use here is strictly Android. So this, you know, the uh, security file we create, mm -hmm. the uh, JKS file. Mm -hmm. That's not a general purpose encryption file. It's just uh, specific to Android. That's right. Okay. The one that we would need for Apple's devices, we would get through the Apple developer portal. So it's their process there to create that certificate. We can do the self-signing one because Android's a little bit more about, you know, anything goes for the good and the bad. And for Apple, you have to have that third-party vouch for you for the good and the bad. And it's a different process. <clears throat> let's go ahead and go to your web browser. And let's go to developer.android.com. <coughs> let's go to developer.android.com. And we'll look at the distribute portal. Like design, develop, distribute. We're at the point of distributing. We need to get this out to people. Let's go to distribute. The secrets to app success on Google Play. So this, you would want to look at this, read this documentation and such, but what I want to guide you toward is Let's see, they changed this recently. Is it under Essentials? All that I'm trying to do is to go to this launch checklist. I'm just trying to go to a screen, and they move this stuff around recently, I guess. There's a screen that tells you basically the, the avenues or your options to distribute your app. Uh, there is through official channels and unofficial channels. Official channels are to go through the, to Google Play, you know, which is built in right to the to all the Android devices. There's also Amazon App Store. Those are two of the official channels. These are app stores that are powered by big big companies that reach to all 200 countries of the world, where anyone in theory could get your app. That's the official channel through the official app stores. Unofficial would be you can you can sell this or give this away from your own website. Off of your own website you could give away or sell your apps. One reason you might want to sell your apps from your own website is you keep more of your profits. Because even though it's free to create the, the, the developer certificate on Android and it's free to create and it's and you can sell your your apps or give away your apps you still have to pay to become a developer on Google Play 
but you could use, as we will see, Amazon. And there, that's totally free. Uh, you know, developer certificate, developer account, selling or giving away apps. All of that on Amazon, as we will see, is totally free. But they will, Amazon and Google will still take a commission off of all of the sales of your apps. So if you're selling your 99 cent apps, they're taking 30%. So you're going to get 70 cents out of your 99 cent app. Okay, no problem. I'll sell my apps for $4.99. Great. Apple, or Apple, Amazon, Google are still going to take their 30%. So it's a flat rate of 30%. That's why maybe I want to sell it through my own website, where I'll take all of the profits myself. I'm not charging myself any amount. I'm selling it all from mine, and I keep all the profits. Yes? So if I did that, and somebody bought it from me, and I'd let them download it, then how would they know how to put it so I have to provide technical service. Yeah, and that's why I want to find that screen here, which basically answers that. That's going to be the problem. You're going to need to give people instructions. Go to your settings, activate developer mode, activate USB debugging, click yes when it warns you, and then plug in your phone, and then do on your command prompt adb-whatever to install your app. Yeah. So no one's gonna do that. They're gonna think, you're trying to hack me. Why are you making me put this app that I can't get on Google? You're, ma you're, getting, you're making me get it off your own website, you're gonna hack me. So really the unofficial channel is not, is not gonna be, it's gonna be a non-starter. Because technically you can develop, distribute your apps also via email, but you still have to include a way for you to sideload, for your users to sideload. And if they are technical and they'll say, yeah, I can activate some settings, I'll do it great, but most people are not going to. They're not going to trust you or they're not going to even be able to do it. Because the great thing about Android is that everyone can, you know, have a different interface and such. But the bad thing about Android is that everyone can have a different interface. So when you're telling people, click on your little gear on the home screen, they're going to say, I don't have a gear. I have a lever. And then they're stuck. I, they, they don't put two and two together. So going the, going the unofficial route Possibly the, the upside is that you keep more of your profits, but the downsides are much more. You're not going to convince people to install your app. So we will go through the official app, the, the official channels. The Google Play and or the Amazon App Store. <coughs> It's in here somewhere. There's some screen in here that tells you what I just told you, but we'll find it later. What I want to show you is here under the Distribute screen, at the very top right, you have Developer Console. Go ahead and click on that. Here we'll ask you for a login. We're not going to log in here, because what's going to happen here is it's going to say, okay, great, welcome, new developer. It's time to set you up with an official Google Developers account. Get your credit card ready. So I'm not going to ask you to create a Google Developers account. It's $25 or $28 or so. It's $28, one-time fee. That's very affordable. As for the iPhone, I have to pay $99 every year. Even if I'm giving away my apps, I have to pay to be a developer on iOS. That's why teaching the sequence completely for Android is so attainable. You don't have to pay for a lot of things. Even this, we are going to use the Amazon App Store, which that is completely free to set up. This, the upside of Google, is, is that uh, most devices have the Google App Store, you know, Google Play, right on the home screen of the device. The Amazon App Store might not be uh, visible right away, or it might have to be added to the device. Uh, but for example, what's the second most popular kind of Android device besides, you know, Motorola, Samsung, and such? Kindle. Kindle. The whole ecosystem of Kindle devices has the Amazon App Store built in. So we're going to be reaching all Android users at the Amazon App Store, yes. And the great thing about it is that it's totally free to set up, which we will do in, in a little bit. Yes? Also in your book, um, he was saying that if you're on the Amazon Store, 
when you want to sell your ads, people are much more likely to spend money because they used to spend money on things there. Yeah, that's that's one of the things about um, you know if if you want to reach the most people you want to go on Android because Android has the most devices installed. If you want to make the most money, you want to go on the iPhone because people are used to 99 cent songs, 99 cent apps, blah blah blah. A lot of people unfortunately on Android are very are very used to free. Free free free. The the, the OS is free. I got this free with a contract. This is free. This is free. You're going to make me pay you're going to make me pay 99 cents for your app? Never mind. People are very skin flinty. They're not even going to want to pay 99 cents for your amazing app. But studies show that people make more money off of the iPhone app store. And it looks like the book is also saying, well, if you're going to go with Android, you might as well go with Amazon version of Android because people are already used to buying those books and buying those DVDs and buying those songs. And okay, I'll pay 99 cents for your app. It's already ready. So a lot of things to keep in mind, but the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through the process of Amazon because it is the most free way to get your foot in the door, and we can publish our app to Google Play and Amazon, no problem. It's just that we're going to do it in class via Amazon because it's the most free. Right after our next break, but any questions at this point? So, yes? yes I, I in that kind of same thread of that conversation, it seems to me more people are likely to go to the Google Play store and look for an app than um, Amazon store for apps, at least in this day. Yes, there is that there is that speed bump, definitely. I get a brand new Android device out of the box, it's like Google Play right on the front. Yeah. So still twenty-eight dollars is not so bad. Yeah, just, I just instinctively I think more people are doing that, at least in the store. There's still a huge pro uh, cohort of of Kindle devices though, $49 for those things, $99, $199. There's still a huge hundreds of millions of users on Kindle and we want to reach them too. The Kindle people will still be able to get to the Google Play apps, but now the Kindle one is going to be pushing the Amazon App Store. So that's why I still want to be on both. I want to reach everyone as everywhere as possible. And our apps developed would run on the Kindle? Definitely. Yes, because it's all it's all basically Android, just skinned slightly different. Yes. So I've been publishing books for the last few years, so Kindle's one of my tools basically. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's basically if you want to create an ebook on Kindle, it's basically HTML and CSS. So you can take the content of your app and make it into a book, and then you can have links from your Kindle book to your website to your app, to, to your app. Yeah, ebooks have really taken off because it used to be very cumbersome and esoteric to, to make an ebook, and uh, now anyone can be a self-publisher. No one, there's going to be no gatekeeper. You're not, you're not going to wait for Random House to publish you. You're going to publish yourself. And with these tools nowadays, Amazon, they're the biggest one. They're the biggest retailer on the planet, next to Walmart. And so you're able to put that book out to more people that you're never going to get that shelf space on on Walmart. So very exciting. Let's take our break. And when we come back, we'll create an account over on Amazon because everyone knows Amazon. It's been around 20 years, and they've got a foothold in the in the uh, app stores for uh, for Android and iOS. So we'll do that in just a bit. It's 8:17. We'll be back at 8:27, and then we'll set up an Amazon developer account.